Well, welcome back everyone to another TR to PR pathway update. And I've decided given the fact that most of you are probably at work when I do it at noon each day, and I'm sure your employers are not terribly happy <laughs> with me pulling you guys away. And also in the middle of the night, it's also not good to, to not let you guys have sleep. So I've decided I'm going to, now that my express entry course is over every evening from five to six, until this thing launches, I'm going to do a live session. Now, obviously, I've had lots of opportunities to relay the most up-to-date information. Last night, I did a live. At noon today, I did a live. And I think we're all just waiting with bated breath to see what is going to happen with this program. And if some of you are out there and you, I don't know, maybe you've been lost in the mountains or maybe you have somewhere or another just literally fallen off the face of the planet when it comes to immigration and are unsure what the heck Mark is doing with these TR to PR pathway stuff. Well, this is basically what it is for those of you to get you up to speed. The new pathway to permanent residence for over 90,000 essential temporary workers and international graduates has dominated the airways, literally dominated these airwaves over the last two weeks. And the problem that we're all facing here is that as we scroll down here and we listen to everything they've got to say, effective May 6th, okay, they're going to open it up to 90,000 people. And theoretically, it's going to be open till November the 5th. But once the caps are filled, then it's going to all come to an end. The problem is that we have very little information. Now, there's a lot of lawyers out there, and I do not fault them in any way, who have clients that really need their representation. And the way the government has set this up, it is not conducive to having representatives help you. I'm not sure where it's going to all play down, you know, where it's all going to, you know, uh, shake down, I guess, and where the dust is going to settle. But there's definitely people that have said they're looking to look for injunctions and class action lawsuits and all this kind of stuff against the government. And, you know, there's a lot of substance to that. For sure there is. Um, but as of today, I can tell you that there is no guide. There is no checklist. There is no instructions 
at all except for the underlying policies. So those of you who have been going online, trying to find information, trying to understand um, what this is all about, all I can do at this stage is point you back here to the source, okay? Read this stuff. Read the release from the government, April 14th. Go down here. You can see there's the list of the occupations. You can figure out which occupation is yours. When you click on the links, it takes you to the health occupations. If you are trying to figure out if your occupation sits on this list, then make sure you assess the knock code associated with it. So if I'm trying to get through, and let's pick one that's probably a little bit lower skill, and low skill probably isn't the best way of describing it. Let's take 3413, okay? You're gonna go here to the NOC 2016. You're gonna open this up. You're gonna open up there. Let me just flip back here, four, three, four, one, three. And you're gonna punch right in here to the knock code, three, four, one, three. Now there hasn't been any real instructions on what it takes to prove that you're in this knock code. But one thing I can tell you from my years of experience with Express Entry is that more than likely they are gonna to adhere to the same principles that apply to the FSW, the Federal Skilled Worker Program, the CEC, when it comes to work experience. So if you go down here, you can see this is the activities in the lead statement. You have to perform those. And I can see that this is really not easy to see. Wow, why is that so small? It's so small. I can't even enlarge it. That's crazy. Well, it is what it is. So we'll back it off here. Okay, so you have to perform all the activities in the lead statement. And then a substantial number of the main duties, which is about 70%. And I got to shrink this down. Do you know what? I don't like this view. I don't like this view. Let's try this one. Well, that's a little better. Okay, let's expand this over here so everybody can see a little bit better. And now, so like I said, right here, the activities here in the lead statement, you have to show that you can, you've performed all those activities and then a substantial number of the main duties. And so here's the main duties. One, there's two, three, four, five, six, six main duties and two, optional let's say may and may these are optional they don't form a part of the calculation so you need to perform about a substantial number of the main duties so really we're looking at about five out of six right around there maybe four out of six might get past it might get you by so your reference letters need to have these duties in them if you're going through one of the essential worker categories so if you're trying to fit yourself into a nurse's aid then you better have a reference letter from your employer that contains duties that correspond to this. Do not copy these and paste them in a, a reference letter and have your employer provide it to you. Don't do it. And like we talked about before, there are basically a year of work in the past three years you have to have accumulated within, flipping back here, within one of the occupations that are listed in these lists, okay? You can go back, you can watch the videos, but go to the source, okay? Go back to the source of information and read it. Take a look at it. It's designed to be plain language and, and able for you to read. Go to the eligibility requirements, okay? These are the public policies. If you want to know what it takes to become an essential worker, well, obviously go back and watch my videos, okay? Take the time. I know it's going to take time. Obviously, there's nothing that we can do at this stage until we have a better, clearer understanding of what they're going to do. Secondary, this is your postgrads. This one's for you, okay? So French speakers, you can read all the policies that apply to each of these, okay? They're all right here. So um, I guess that's visitors. Sorry, I'm jumping the gun here. Everything on April the 12th and up. So that's what I want to point out to you guys as you're trying to figure out how you're going to navigate this, what to do, what not to do. I know tons of you are posting questions, guys. And, um, and I'm not going to be able to get to all of them, that's for sure. I'm not. This is going to be a short little lesson, a short little um, update because there really isn't much to update. Um, the, the, you know, the government hasn't released much to us. And so other than what I've already said before, the only piece that I want to highlight for everyone, if you have not yet had a chance to watch the video that I did at, at lunch today or the one that I did last night, if we go back here, and then we go right here to the, maybe I didn't even, 
search for it. Eh, I probably don't have it now that I think about it. So go to IRCC, payment online, and then pay your fees online. And this, I want to reiterate to you guys, as I've told you before, people asked, should we pay our fees? And I've said, no, hold off till we get the guide. So people have raced here. They've gone to permanent residence. They've clicked on no. They've thought that they were really doing themselves a favor by somehow locking in their spot if they pay their fee. They've clicked on this one right here that's there. They've paid the fee. And now we get a tweet from immigration basically saying, don't do that. Don't pay it. Don't pay that. And this is where I'm going to start to be a little bit more critical of immigration because we really should have had something released today. And unless something comes out magically while I'm doing this video, it's going to be tough, right? It's going to be tough. I know they've been racing and I know they've got a master plan behind this, but, but understand that there's going to be a lot of people that are not too happy. And it's hard for you guys to be able to go through the process of, of, of preparing yourself for what is a full application. We're not talking about some notification of interest that you're racing to a PNP to get your basic tombstone information in. This is a full comprehensive application for permanent residence that has all the forms. If you wanna go watch which forms, go back and watch the videos as well. I talk about each of them. The, the documents, go to the express entry completeness check, look at what's in there, go to the PNP paper-based application, the guide there, the checklist, there's some good assistance to help you with your dependent family members. Those things can, can give you the ideas as to what you're going to need to get. But go overboard. Get more than you need. We don't know if you're going to need a birth certificate. So get one anyways. We don't know if, if you're proving employment or being employed, whether you need a full you know, breakdown like I've shown you of the, of the NOC duties and corresponding duties in your, in your letter. We don't know if that's going to be 100% mandatory. Go get it. Go overboard. So when this launches, you're ready. Now, a couple other tips. So, and I've said these before, but I'm going to reiterate them. When you're preparing your application, right now, what we do know is that, that well, at least they backtrack again, the generic form, the, the IMM8, the 0008 generic form, is going to be electronic. You're not going to print that off. You're not going to sign it. You're not going to scan it back in. It's going to be just like the 5710 if you filed your work permit extensions. It's going to be an electronic document that's validated and then uploaded. It has barcode associated with it and the government system will be able to read it, categorize and sort. That's why it's so important. When it comes to the other forms, they will be printed, signed, scanned, uploaded and submitted. And that's something that was just released, just revealed to us just, just last week, right? Um, and so as anything comes up, I promise you that I will share it with you guys. And tonight, seven to nine, I will be in my, my private course. And I'm not going to say anything more about that because people are getting fatigued of me talking about the course. So I'm going to leave that aside. This is all about just trying to give you what I know so that you guys know Mark isn't holding anything back. Now, with that being said, at 1230 tomorrow, I received another invitation to the government to meet with them to talk about this. And I don't have any clarification. It could be that it's not even about the TR to PR pathway. Maybe it's something else, right? I don't know. But uh, myself and the other representative organizations um, are going to have a meeting, I believe, tomorrow. And then at 5 p.m., I will notify everybody of what I've learned after I have relayed all the information to that I that I have to my table officers and to the Canadian Bar Association and all those lawyers who count on me to give them as much up-to-date information as I can. Once that's shared, then I share it within my group and then I share it here. So every evening from five to six, I commit to you guys that I'll be here for you. And ultimately those who wanna, um, okay, I'm not gonna say that. Um, there's, there's assistance out there. So do what you can to start collecting things now. You know you're gonna need a reference letter. Um, medicals and police certificates are not required. Okay, not up front, at least as far as we know. So collect everything that you can. Make those, make sure those forms are completed. Use extra pages to, to fill out the information that doesn't fit in the forms. And don't pay your fee yet. All right? So those are some of the tips that I can give you. And, and I'll open it up a little bit here to answer just a few questions. But I am going to this one is going to be short because there's not much to update you with. There hasn't been any changes. I booked both of these because I was sure the government was going to release it. 
So unless someone here is, you know, has just seen the government release something, and as I scroll through all the comments here, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think we have, you know, too much. Um, yeah, this is going to be short. So I'll, I'll answer just a few questions, and then, and then I'm going to shut it down, and because I don't want to take up your time, um, unless there's something to actually announce. But I'll try to answer a few questions. And if you go back and watch the previous videos, I've answered pretty much every question that's out there. So now I'm just kind of re-answering. I still don't know whether a postgraduate diploma is going to work. IRCC hasn't confirmed that with me. So, yeah. All right, let's see what we've got here as a few people are tuning in. So, okay. Yep, academic IELTS is not possible. Um <laughs> Alexa, thank you for putting down your dinner. Do you know what? I'll share something with you guys. I didn't have hardly any time to have any dinner. I, I put some pierogies. I like pierogies and some asparagus. And I quickly cooked it up as fast as I could. And I got through a couple spears of asparagus and um, two pierogies. And so it's actually sitting on my table. And I haven't had any lunch all day today. And so those of you who give up your dinner, I know what you're giving up. And that means a lot to me. Okay. Okay, so this one, I think I've answered this question here at from you about 100 times, I think. I'll answer it one more time because you've got it in super bold caps so that everybody can see it. If I start working on May 5th, how do I show I am employed, no pay stubs to show? You get a reference letter from your employer. It's the only thing that you can do that is fully detailed, that complies with the completeness check. And I'll show you guys where that completeness check is. Those of you who are unfamiliar with Express Entry, if you yes um and that was the wrong button that's what this day has been like so if you go here and you go ee and then type in completeness check ircc then it will take you right here when you're here follow this as your guide for how you put together your supporting documents if you follow this, this will be a good, good insight for you to know what you need to do. If you are lazy and you do not go here and you do not read this and get something that's just the bare bones, then when immigration sends out that document checklist and your stuff is deficient, understand your application will be refused. So you can do things. There's things you can do. It's not just a matter of just sitting on your hands. So proof of work experience, you're going to go through here and you're going to produce a reference letter that looks like this. It's going to have all these things in it, your job title, duties and responsibilities, job status, which is absolutely important, your current job, the dates that you've worked for the company, number of hours per week, and annual salary and benefits. That's the kind of letter that I want to see my clients and those in my class have, right? So there you go, Herat. I've answered that question once again. <laughs> and hopefully that will be the last one. Okay. I know you'll have other ones, but, uh, but that's probably one that we can probably, we can settle on as being good. Okay, let's answer a couple more questions here. And then, like I said, I'm going to kind of shut this one down here. Um, okay, and if your letters don't have that, if you're not perfected with all the information that I've shown in that reference letter, then do what you can to provide other evidence to support it. And if you don't have it, then just do the best you can, and then you just have to let it go. Okay. Uh, nope, sure you can't apply with, with any job, with no job yet. If you're short, it won't work. You have to have it on the day they launch. It's possible, you guys, that they may decide to delay this, right? It's possible. But at this stage, there's no sight of that in, uh, yeah, in <laughs> no, no, no sight in the horizon. Arshana says, the new PR program is making us all wait for a good movie. So much of anxiety. Please give us some good news. Do you know what? I'd probably attribute this to something like The Purge. I've never seen the movie. All I've seen is trailers or whatever, but that's probably the movie that we're waiting for, right? <laughs> that's a horrible reference. I don't even know why I said that. But that's probably, it's more like a horror show, right? Than something that's a good movie that we want to watch. Huh. Comment what your favorite movie is. Tell me what your favorite movie is of all time in the comments below. I need something to take my mind away from this as well. And so something that's maybe on Amazon Prime or Netflix, 
that you recommend as your favorite movie of all time, just post it in the comments below. And, uh, and then I'm going to choose from whoever, you know, whatever you guys give for options. And, and, uh, and just maybe after I finish my live session in that unknown thing that I'm doing that no one knows about from seven to nine, um, once I'm done, then I think I'm going to turn a movie on, watch it till 11 and then crash. That's what I'm going to do. Then psych myself up for another day where hopefully I'm going to get a meeting with IRCC and then they're going to launch or at least release the guide and everything tomorrow. That's my hope. Please, IRCC, just get it out there. Get it out there or delay it for a week because people need to have the opportunity and the ability to prepare. Okay. All right. And our whole front line is going to shut down when everybody takes Thursday off because they don't know when it's going to be launched. That's going to be crazy. Okay. Okay. Alexa says, can we still apply even if a study or work permit only has three months validity left? Yeah, there's no problems with that at all. Okay. And just to confirm, Ben, so hold off, my friend. I know you're answering questions left and right. But when it comes to valid status, even being out of status with an ability to restore status is still fine. So that's in the policies. So I know you're super eager, Ben, to answer everybody's question. And, and, but at this stage, just hold off because that's not actually... That's not actually true because it restore, um, well, being able to restore is not valid status, but the policy allows for that. So, all right. Um, and anybody that's asking about, can I qualify? I have to ring the bell guys. So keep it to just general questions about the program. That would be a benefit to everyone. Okay, so I come in tonight and ask this question tonight because I, I remember last time I, I went in and I actually took about 15 minutes to show you. So the reality is maybe it wasn't quite that much. Okay, I will, I'll flip this around and I'll, I'll do it one last time here, okay? So when it comes to the background declaration form, there's a weird comment here that says you're to include traveling. Traveling really only applies for this form if you're not otherwise a student or working or in jail, right? Traveling is I'm between periods. I've, I'm in my gap, you know, my gap between schools and I'm taking two or three months off and I'm traveling the world. Put that in here, okay? When it comes to travel, general travel, there's no way they intended to have all of the supplementary travel information that you put in here for short little trips to across the border to, uh, to get some groceries or something. They never intended for you to include all of that in the personal history. So this is when you don't have anything else to do. You're retired, detention, you're in jail, studying, you're unemployed, right? And so you got a choice. Are you unemployed or are you traveling? I like traveling, okay? So hopefully that helps there, clearing that one up. Okay, continuing down here. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. Can I not apply under any category till I find a job? Nope, you can't. And a lot of people are asking questions that are have been answered numerous times before. I'm assuming that you're new to this, and that's totally fine. So Maccabi, um, language is a mandatory component. And like I said, if you guys want to learn more, then it's really, really important that you take the time to go back here and look at the instructions that IRCC has, um, has put out in their public policies, okay? So if you search um, public, well, actually the best way probably is for you just to go uh, right back to the source and just search for this, new pathways to permanent residence for over 90,000 temporary workers. And if you click in here, TR to PR Pathways Canada, you'll probably, okay, well, there's, um, there's all my videos. You online payment. Um, that's my course. Let's see. That's not a good one. Uh, so if you go new PR program for essential workers and international grads, that'll be better. There we go. And then there it is right here. So new pathway to permanent residency for over 90,000. So you click in there and hey, we got a newcomer. Good job, Kubir. Great job. Way to get in there. So he's got a video up there now. 
Okay, so here, this is where the policy is. You guys need to go there and please, please read it. This is what you can be doing now. You have time because we don't have anything else. And the essential occupations, healthcare, they're there. Easy links to them. And then the eligibility requirements. Yeah, please read that. And then these, one, these questions will be really, really simple. Okay, so language testing is mandatory for all. It is entirely possible, Sona, if there's enough push from everybody to delay it and enough on social media that maybe they could. I know the Canadian Bar Association, we are hands off. Like we can't, we're not an organization that's about, you know, um, filing a, uh, um, an injunction, you know, that's not in our mandate. But all, there's a bunch of immigration lawyers. I encourage them to, to do whatever they need to do. The key is that everybody has an opportunity. Okay. Um, all right. Ali, you don't know that, my friend. <laughs> we don't know. I may have a discussion with them tomorrow. And when I recommend that they consider postponing it and holding off for a little bit and then releasing the guide and giving people time, well, they may listen to me, Ali. They may listen to the head of Acadie. David Chalk's going to join and, and or Capic. I don't know if Dory has never really been on these uh, um, for, for some time, but um, there's some, yep, there's some good people with Capic that'll probably be on that call as well. And so we'll just have to see. And Raul, you are the best, my friend. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. IELTS is academic IELTS. We've also petitioned for that. Come on, let people use this. But no, and they feel at this stage that there's plenty of people that have them, so they don't need to worry about that. Okay. The caps, you'll know that they're filled share because on their website, where you log in, there will be the cap, the running tally that will show how many that are, that are coming in, and it's going to be refreshed as fast as it can. But it's when people click submit of their application, and it's a simple, you know, it's a simple little clicker. Every time someone pushes the blue button, the number goes down one. Doot, 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 till it's zero. Whether that happens in a day or a week or a month, I don't know. But at this rate, if no one knows what the heck they're doing, aside from my friends that are hanging out with me tonight, um, I guess ultimately it's going to take a long time because people are going to be starting from scratch. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Hmm. Hi, George. Thanks for giving thumbs up, my friend. You guys are awesome. I think I've answered this one as well, Bruno, in the gang. Um, I try to get the full one every single time I can. Every, every single time I can, I try to get a full letter. And if your IRCC says, nope, a simple verification is good enough, then great. And if that's all you can get, then that's what you have to submit. You just roll with what you've got. Okay, we zip through, and I know there's way more ability for me to answer. And once again, I'm already at 5:30. I was actually intending to finish it up here, but I'll ask if I'll, I'll try to get some questions that benefit everybody. So if I skip your question, understand I've a, I've answered it maybe 500 times before, and I'm trying to find the ones that are going to be the most benefit to everyone. This is a classic one, Silent Monk. If your employer refuses to give you a letter, man alive, at the earliest opportunity, turf them. At the earliest opportunity, find another job, hit the road. Like, that's just jerks. And yes, you use everything that you can get your hands on if that doesn't work. Yep, we've talked about that, Pankaj. You can on your study permit through the, through the essential worker program if you have that one year in three. This is a tough one, Thelma. If you qualify for more than one, I would take the one that takes the least amount of, well, there's the least amount of things that can go wrong. It's kind of a catch-22 because there's tons of international grads that are going to be clamoring for spots. How many healthcare workers are there? Are they going to be as mobile as the international students? I don't think so. So normally I would say there's less things that can go wrong with an international grad because you don't have to prove that one year or that you're working a particular knock. But, you know, even though there's 20,000 compared to the 40,000, um, I can't tell you what to do, Thelma, for sure. But I can, you know, I, I, in, my, in my gut, I'm thinking that there's probably going to be, it's going to take longer for that 20,000 to fill up than the 40, but we'll see. Okay. Okay. 
And anybody who's asking questions about their specific situation that doesn't benefit everyone else, I'm kind of bypassing that. Okay, uh, let's see. Shramila says, hi, Mark, I have purchased, er, but I still do have a lot of questions. I need like a buzzer that, that's like, that blocks out me saying anything about that thing that I won't name. <laughs> so Shramila, come tonight, seven to nine, my friend, and I will guarantee your questions shall be answered. Okay, some people who've posted questions I know I've answered. I'm going to slip through that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And that person's over in the Express Entry Law private Facebook group. Yeah, Meyer says there's a section where they ask language preference and interviewer and the correspondence. What should we select there? Whatever works for you, my friend. It can be English is probably or French or whatever options you have. This is one of those things where it really doesn't matter. I-R-D-M. It really doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, Ruby, let's see. <laughs> Ruby says, Mark, you should have a paid podcast option to join on YouTube so that people like me who wants to pursue a career in immigration can pay for it monthly and get your, and get your guidance. Ruby, our courses, my courses are wide open and I'm going to start to do a ton more, not just express entry, not just the tier to peer pathway, but there's a spousal one that's coming and, and that's what the goal is, is to help everybody understand. So I'd be more than delighted if, you know, for you to, to connect in. And as I release those courses, the, the spousal one, I haven't even, oh, I'm talking about courses again. I'm not supposed to do that. Um, <laughs> I've been reprimanded by, by listeners and that's, and it's fair. I talk a lot about it. I, and it dominates a lot of the discussion by my course, by my course. And I, I don't want it to be about that. You, you guys just have to understand how much value I know is in there. And so it's hard for me not to just scream to the world that it's, it's, it's totally worth it. But at the same time, I understand people are here to get advice and direction. And, and I have a, a responsibility to you as well, whether or not you purchase the course, which is why I keep going live and sharing information and answering questions. But I know I'll never please everybody. There's always going to be those that are out there that, that um, just figure I should give everything away for free. and But that's okay. Okay, let's see what we got here. Monsoon, in the generic form, if you don't have any dependents, you're not going to add a dependent. George has got a, a medical that was done Feb 2021. It won't make me take another medical for the TR to fear French speaking stream, correct? George, they, those medicals will be valid for a year regardless. And if you're going through the Francophone program, the French program, you're not going to have any issues. Highly unlikely. And they're already towing, like I said, with waiving medicals for people. Okay, I'm going to go another four minutes and shut it down at 540. So, and I know that there's like way more questions than I could ever get to. If I've answered one, I'm going to skip the other ones. Okay. So everybody can get a chance. Um, okay. Criminal record. If I've lived in Canada for the last 10 years and no travel period to other countries. No, you don't. You don't, Lance. You don't. Yeah, I know, Arthur. It's so frustrating, isn't it? You know, where do you go? Right. So we flip the screen around again. Where do you go? We go to Twitter. We can try immigration's Twitter feed. Let's. Okay, let's see. Anything? Any updates? No. May 2nd, it says, hey, don't forget, there's a reminder. Okay, that's great. Eligibility. When you click this, all it does is take you here. And so not very helpful. <laughs> I. But, you know, it's easy for us to talk about all this stuff when, you know, when we're not where we're not setting up these programs. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. I know that there's a lot of questions. Every evening from 5 to 6, I will go live. And that's my commitment to you. Even on Thursday and even on Friday, I will go live and try to make sense of all of this. I'm hoping tomorrow, in all honesty, that they actually put it off, that they decide, you know what? We, we're going to make some tweaks. We're not going to go live on Thursday. And we're just going to push it off for a week, right? Like, that's what I hope they do. And then tomorrow in the afternoon, they release the guide and the instructions. That's what I hope. And they open up a pathway 
where they put little a little comment in there that says, your representative is free to use and help you set up your email and submit your application for you. That's what I hope. And that's what I'm going to be advocating for tomorrow. And for the rest of you, well, there are alternative options that you can choose. <laughs> and the link is below. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I really, really appreciate you guys connecting in. And uh, I'll be back, hopefully with more news. And when there's news to tell, trust me, I'll be here. All right, take care. Mark Colthy, Canadian immigration lawyer, ex-immigration officer, former high school teacher, signing off. See you later.